name is Anil and I have Siva here co-presenting with me. Uh, we work for Intuit and today we are going to talk about an approach um, for doing API runtime orchestration uh, with Istio and OpenAPI 3. So uh, just a little bit of background and information about the company we, we work for, Intuit. Uh, Intuit is a fintech company that was founded in uh, 1983. Um, and since then, uh, it has launched a lot of products and Today, uh, the main products include uh, TurboTax, uh, which is a tax preparation software, Mint, uh, personal uh, finance application, and um, small business um, accounting software called QuickBooks. And Intuit also recently acquired uh, Credit Karma and MailChimp. Um, now, uh, most of the revenue uh, for the company uh, comes from its um, um, from the United States, um, and then. Um, Historically, like uh, be, from Intuit mode from being like a traditional fintech company to a leading edge platform company um, where um, most of our infrastructure is now built on um, cloud native technologies like Kubernetes, Istio, um, Opa, Aether, to, to name a few. Um, and as part of that, uh, Istio is as in recognition to that, Istio also, uh, sorry, the in recognition to using Istio Kubernetes and all these CNCF technologies, um, Intuit received an uh, open user, um, like end user um, award in 2019. And uh, we are an active participant uh, in the open source community as well. We have around 75 open source projects. Um, the ones relevant to the Istio community are uh, Argo. Uh, you might have heard about Argo CD, Argo. Um, uh, rollouts and Argo workflows. Uh, these help you run your workflows um, and also workloads in Kubernetes clusters. And Admiral, uh, which is an open source project uh, under Istio ecosystem um, that helps uh, facilitate a multi-cluster um, service mesh, Istio service mesh. It provides config syncing and automatic configuration. A little bit of statistics about like the scale at which we operate. Um, so we have around 900 plus uh, teams that host uh, 5,000 or more uh, developers. And uh, we do have uh, 200 plus Kubernetes clusters uh, that host more than 7,000 namespaces. And at peak traffic, uh, we uh, use around 77,000 underlying EC2 compute nodes. Um, the other interesting facts to note uh, are uh, all these 200 plus clusters, uh, they all run Istio and they form the multi-cluster service mesh. Um, and all these 200 plus clusters are also upgraded um, on a regular uh, basis every month. So uh, setting up the context uh, today we are here for, right? Uh, so the orchestration API. So what are orchestration APIs? So these are oftentimes um, APIs that integrate on multiple other APIs uh, to provide a simplified um, interface for the end users or end user applications, right? And traditionally or um, like generally these uh, orchestration APIs, um, they are built uh, using something called special purpose uh, services orchestration layer. This is nothing but like you built a new layer um, um, on top of all your APIs and you start um, orchestrating or like uh, writing this orchestration into this layer, right? Now, uh, just taking a simple example, like we have payments API and then we have a, a wallet API, right? And then I'm building a banking application um, and uh, what I end up doing is instead of backing application, calling uh, the payments API and wallets API directly and have to, having to manage um, all of that configuration, uh, we introduce something called a front-end API, right? And this forms, this becomes the orchestration layer. Now, there are some um, associated challenges uh, with this approach, which is oftentimes the delivery of this new orchestration APIs uh, requires more effort and it's time consuming. And, and that's because uh, obviously you have to build this new component or this layer, um, and then you also, you ha also have to figure out um, how to uh, configure these to talk to these underlying microservices um, and, and whatnot. So it's, it, and it involves multiple uh, teams as well. And it's also like the op API orchestration is business critical because a use case suddenly arises uh, or the business need arises that, hey, uh, how about like, using the combination of these APIs and then building this product. 
but then the integration process uh, moves slowly, right? Um, and then there is also a lack of um, documentation and governance, uh, in, and also the visibility aspect. Um, if you look at if you look at this orchestration layer, um, oftentimes the the ownership is um, is it's either uh, jointly owned between like the app and the backend API teams, or um, we have also seen um, that uh, eventually that ownership falls apart and like no one is owning this orchestration layer anymore, and it becomes more and more difficult to uh, reason about things that are happening in this orchestration layer. And there are also like some other uh, technological complexities associated with this layer. So it starts out as uh, I'm, I'm going to illustrate this in the next slide, but start out as something simpler, but um, eventually like uh, building this orchestration layer and setting up the manifest and resources for this orchestration layer becomes more and more complex. So it's not easy to um, kind of manage this uh, over a period of time or to even um, um, start, start that with. Now, um, just about what I was um, saying. So you take the same example of this payments and wallet API. Um, so this is how it starts. Um, it starts out as a simple proxy or aggregator, um, very uh, sleek. Um, now, as more uh, logic um, is required or like new use case arises, there's like more business logic um, that gets put into this. Um, and eventually it becomes your um, the one front end api that everyone is using and um, all the apps are using it becomes uh, some kind of this the main orchestration layer or a single point with like a central um, deployment pipeline and whatnot that makes things uh, more difficult for you to deploy and manage it right so that's essentially the life cycle of um, how the orchestration api is um, that have been written it into it like that that's what we have seen them evolve into right um, and then they finally becomes uh, they finally become very hard to manage now uh, as we are looking into this problem and having seen this patterns for like over the last five years um, and with our recent um, and advancements in the infrastructure and istio service mesh that is that spawns across um, uh, hundreds of our kubernetes clusters uh, we were looking at like we were uh, creating a low code no code solution um, that has runtime semantics um, uh, written into the api contract um, instead of building it into the into the business logic or into the orchestration layer how about you have these runtime semantics um, it like defined as part of the api contract right um, and uh, also being able to declaratively describe this api orchestration instead of it being some sort of a configuration or written as code into your um, orchestration layer, right? And how about like also generating these manifests that you require for this orchestration layer during deployment time, and then you don't have to figure out this whole orchestration layer um, right ahead of time, but this will become more of like a dynamically generated orchestration um, uh, manifest. And last but not the least, um, it, how about like also having all these dynamic routing rules? Because now you have uh, your uh, your declaration or your definition of this orchestration and what it does, and we can also now generate the manifest. But like uh, we, the final thing that connects all of this is the routing rules, right? It'll, like given uh, given an API, like an orchestration API is being called. Uh, what are those rules uh, that like will help um, route the request to like the appropriate um, microservices? So um, for the for the second bullet point that I just talked about, which is being able to declaratively describe your orchestration, um, for that we need a little bit of background on OpenAPI three. So OpenAPI three it's based on the original Swagger uh, two specification. And it does it does provide like a standard format to define and describe RESTful APIs, right? Um, so for us to be able to declaratively describe the orchestration, we want like some open standard where we can describe this or we can use to describe that. Now, if you look at the Open API three spec, it, it itself is pretty simple. Uh, like it has um, like four main um, blocks, uh, which are servers, components, security, and paths. Right, um, and 
getting like I'm not going to get into the details of each one of this, uh, but it's just like a basic uh, the whatever I'm showing is like a very basic specification, right? Like that shows the example. And then under paths is where you actually define your APIs, and that's what we have used to um, um, come up with this approach of declaratively uh, defining the orchestration. Now, um, there is something called uh, custom properties in Open API 3 specification. So uh, we want, like any any time we want to extend the functionality of the Open API specification, um, you can use something called custom properties that start with X hyphen. And then that kind of defines um, that this is something uh, like custom, and then it will have like an appropriate handler to um, uh, deal with those. And an example here is um, the one, the properties that have been highlighted in blue um, are the X Amazon API Gateway Auth type and X Amazon API Gateway Auth Tracer. So this is uh, basically the component section of the Open API spec um, that NA, that uh, configures a custom authorizer for API for a REST API that you have defined, um, and that is behind Amazon's API Gateway, right? So the first one, we want to define all the runtime semantics um, into the contract, right? And what kind of semantics are those? So you have something called, if you look at API orchestration, um, you essentially what you're looking at is, um, there are like at least three different uh, patterns that we have seen at, at into it. So one is aggregation. So you have two different microservices and you want to aggregate uh, responses from both of them and send it as a single response back to the application. Uh, so in this case, the payments and the wallets API that we talked about, right? Um, and then we have this API transformation. Uh, this is simply like transforming the response from like a single API from a single microservice into something different. Like for example, you want to add additional fields. Uh, you want to strip off some of the uh, fields. So <clears throat> this falls under transformation, right? And then there's another interesting use case called proxy. So oftentimes you offer uh, APIs to third parties and you want to like um, offer only a subset of APIs that are within uh, like uh, that are being served by microservice. And then you want to group them across microservices. So I'm taking subset of APIs from each other microservice and then making a suite of um, APIs or I'm adding that via this orchestration layer. So, so that's basically what the API um, proxy uh, pattern means. Now, uh, we have talked about those two, uh, like the two bullet points that we are aiming at for the low-code, no-code solution, which is the, the um, declarative approach, which we are going to use the open API tree specification uh, for the orchestration. And then uh, the, defining the runtime semantics, uh, which are like for these API patterns, which are the aggregation, transformation, and proxy, and building uh, and putting that into the declarative description. Now, Siva is going to um, talk about the other two, which is being able to um, generate the runtime manifest for this orchestration, and then also generating the dynamic routing rules and how all of this part, like um, all of this comes together. And he's also going to show a cool demo about um, this working. So Siva, back to you. Yeah, uh, thanks Anil. Let me share my screen. Are you guys able to see my screen? No, I'm not able to. Okay. Let me only share the slides and see if that works. You can use a desktop share. Is that what you're using or you're using the slides option? No, I'm using the, I'm sharing my entire screen. And uh, for me, it's showing as my screen is being shared. Okay, perfect, yeah, to... then go ahead, yeah. You can see my screen now, Ali? Yes, I can. I can only see the empty screen. I don't see the. Okay, yeah, I can see it now. Yes. Okay, 
Yep. Cool. Go ahead. Yeah. Yep. Let me stop this link. Yep. Um, as Anil explained uh, in the previous slides, um, uh, this framework uh, provides a solution to create the runtime manifests for orchestration APIs at deployment time. So the manifest for Kubernetes resources like deployment, service, and ingress uh, would be generated. And then uh, the, these resources would be created in the target cluster where the API um, needs to be deployed. And also this um, uh, framework creates um, Istio routing rules, um, Istio virtual services uh, to enable uh, routing of um, request in the service mesh. So this diagram shows like um, how um, runtime manifests are created from the API contract. On the left hand side, you see an API contract with Open API 3 specification. Um, you can see this is a simple um, API spec for aggregation, API aggregation. So the API, a new aggregation API is created called banging. And in the path section, uh, you can see slash banging. And also in the API uh, contract, we have added custom extension called XORX containers. And these custom extensions in the API contract allows us to add additional functionality functionalities to the API contract. For example, here you can see uh, this particular custom extension says what Docker image needs to be used to create the container for this particular orchestration API. And then in the middle, you see we have a orchestration CLA tool. Uh, this is a CLA tool uh, written in Golang. And this is a, a tool developed in-house at Indeed. And this is not open source at the moment. Uh, but this is a potential candidate that we may open source in future. So this orchestration tool passes the API contract. It takes API contract as an input and then creates the Kubernetes and Istio manifest. Um, in Kubernetes, it creates resources like deployment, service, and ingress. And when it creates the deployment, it would use the Docker image specified in the API contract um, to create uh, the deployment for that orchestration API. And this particular Docker image would have the business logic to do the API aggregation. It would make calls to uh, different APIs, get the response, and then send the response back as a single response. And also this, um, uh, Orchestration CLA creates virtual services, which would have the routing rules to enable traffic routing in the Istio service mesh. So this dynamic uh, traffic routing rule generation, uh, this particular framework for e-space routing can be enabled with uh, zero additional overhead. The moment uh, the Kubernetes and Istio resources are created, like deployment service and ingress, and also the Istio virtual services are created, the east-west south east-west traffic routing is enabled, and other services, other upstream or downstream services in the mesh, would be able to connect to this endpoint and send or receive data. And for north-south traffic routing, uh, we are using API gateway. Um, Induced has API gateway on border to mesh, and API gateway acts as a service zero in the service mesh. Traffic uh, received at the external client traffic are received at API gateway, and then API gateway routes the request through service mesh to target services. And from that on point onward, the private networking is used, and all the traffic are sent over a mutual TLS. And also, um, uh, we are using um, Admiral to copy the virtual services from one cluster to other. Um, Admiral is an open source project in Istio community and supported by um, Istio uh, contributors. Um, what Admiral does is Admiral syncs uh, the virtual services created in one cluster to all other clusters in a multi-cluster service mesh. So uh, this slide illustrates how uh, the deployment would be done for an orchestration API. Um, so in this slide on the right hand side, you see the payment and wallet API. These are existing APIs, which are already deployed to a Kubernetes cluster, which has Istio enabled. And now uh, we want to create, we want to create a new orchestration API and it would be deployed to the target cluster uh, shown in the middle. Uh, so the API creator or the API developer would drop in the API contract 
and we have this orchestration CLI tool which would pass the API contract and create the resources, Kubernetes and Istio resources at runtime. So here in the diagram, you can see it has created a service um, uh, ingress and the deployment objects for Kubernetes. And also it has created a virtual service, Istio virtual service. Once these resources are created, boom, the e-space traffic routing would be enabled and other services in the mesh would be able to access this orchestration API through the mesh endpoint. To enable uh, north-south trafficking, traffic uh, routing, we use um, API Gateway. Um, API Gateway is on border to mesh. But uh, what needs to be done is to have the north-south traffic and uh, routing working. We need to copy this virtual service into Gateway cluster as well as all other clusters. For that, we use Admiral open source component, um, which does the automatic configuration and service discovery in a multi-cluster mesh. We use that, we have enabled it in all the clusters, which would sync the virtual service or replicate the serv virtual service from the orchestration API cluster to gateway cluster, as well as all the other clusters. Benefits to the ecosystem, uh, because uh, this uh, way uh, or this framework provide faster extensibility for existing APIs. And that way it also provide faster uh, time to market for new orchestration APIs. And this solution can be used to create new um, APIs with different OC and OCN settings. And it enables selected data to be exposed to selected users. Customization of APIs at edge is uh, made easier with this approach. And also because uh, the orchestration is kept as code in API contract in this declarative way, the governance and review process becomes easier. And also, as I mentioned earlier, um, because Admiral syncs the virtual service to all the clusters, it helps um, skipping additional hops during the um, API request routing. Um, as I mentioned, like uh, when virtual, virtual services are copied to all the clusters, if you take a proxy use case, when the traffic arrives at API gateway cluster, it can directly be routed to the target service instead of it being routed to another service, which would then proxy the request to target service. So this way we can avoid additional network hops. So for the demo uh, today, we have uh, two parts to the demo. We will show um, how the orchestration CLA is used to generate the Kubernetes and Istio uh, runtime resource manifest. And also we will show a simple aggregation scenario where um, the two of the services can be uh, aggregated through orchestration API and the response can be sent as a single response. So this repo you see here, um, this is the uh, orchestration CLA, we call it IOA3 CTL. Uh, this is a CLA written in Golang. Uh, this is developed in-house and Indeed. Um, and this is uh, something we can potentially open source in future. So this CLA, what it does is, um, it takes uh, an API pick as input, and then it would generate the runtime manifest. So this command, um, IA3CTL routes generate, uh, does that. So let me run this command in CLA. And you can see here it has recreated all the runtime manifest for it passes this particular API spec and it has created a Kubernetes deployment. And you can also see it has created a Kubernetes service. And also it has created the manifest for a gateway resource and, and a virtual service also gets created. And in the virtual service, you can see for each of the API path, it has the routing rules, what's the API endpoint and how it needs to be routed and what is the target service it needs to be routed. For each of the endpoints in the API contract, you can see here uh, the new rules are added in the virtual service. So this is how uh, the manifest for runtime resources are created and then I will also show a simple aggregation scenario. 
So here you see uh, the responses of two existing API. One is the payments API and the other is the wallets API. These are already deployed to a cluster where we have Istio service mesh enabled. And Admiral, Admiral generated this uh, .mesh uh, endpoint. And also these virtual services for these services are synced to all other clusters by Admiral. So this dot mesh endpoint is only accessible inside a service mesh and for us to aggregate and also for us to deploy a new orchestration API, we need to use API gateway to access it from externally. So I have a postman request. If you send this, this is the API gateway endpoint for the new orchestration API. So I have, I have the response already. So you can see here this particular API, API gateway endpoint. We get a aggregated response of the wallet and payments API. So as, as shown in this diagram, uh, these are the existing services, payments and wallets. These are the services which had the dot mesh endpoint. And then we deployed new this new orchestration API and enabled it uh, to enable the north south traffic routing through API gateway. And this is the API gateway endpoint that I access through a postman to get the aggregated response. So we are wrapping up uh, this orchestration or this framework uh, is built using standard open API specification and we use uh, open API custom extensions to add additional functionalities to the API contract. And this declarative uh, way or declarative definition of orchestration as code provides better visibility and a governance model. Traffic routing rules are dynamically uh, uh, created and the resources are dynamically created during deployment to time uh, using the orchestration CLI tool and uh, deployed to the target clusters. So this approach makes uh, less maintenance overhead for orchestration API. And also orchestration, um, uh, orchestration APIs are created newly without making any changes to the existing API. This allows independent and safer updates and new um, orchestration API creation. Uh, this slide has um, some uh, useful links which you can refer. The first link is a one pager, um, one pager document that we created in Admiral Repo. Uh, so, this is uh, all the details that we uh, presented in today's talk are there, and we would encourage you to go there, add your comments, and uh, review it. And also, um, we also have a related talk on API on Gateway or API Gateway on Service Mesh tomorrow. Anil and another uh, Intuit, Intuit engineer is giving this talk. So we encourage you to join this talk tomorrow to get more details on how uh, at Intuit uh, we have uh, deployed API Gateway on Service Mesh. And also the last thing is for Admiral uh, Repo. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Admiral is an open source project in Istio ecosystem and supported by uh, Istio community. Uh, we encourage you to go to this repo at uh, GitHub Stars and also um, support and contribute to Admiral. So we would like to take this opportunity to thank Istio community for the continuous support and keeping this product awesome. And also uh, thanks everyone who took their time to join today's talk and listening. Uh, with that, we are open for questions. If you have any questions, uh, we can.